Simon Harding still with me and joining now are Peter Folding, diver and forensic search expert who has been assisting in the search for Nicola and Mark Williams-Thomas, an investigative journalist and former police detective. Welcome both. Mark, can I start with you, my friend, please? Who do you believe, the police or the husband? So let me be very clear. For the last couple of days, I've come up here having had very close contact with the police and also with the family. And I can tell you that uh, I've received information over the last couple of days which has caused me to ask the police a number of significant questions. And this evening, of course, they've now released further information. I was told uh, about something that had gone on, gone on within the family environment, which obviously puts a different light to it. Let's be very clear. The media strategy has been appalling. I spoke to the police yesterday in real detail, and they accepted that they had got much of that wrong, which is why there was a, a press conference this morning led by the ACC and the SIO. You know, Simon makes some absolutely valid points. The problem is, is they came out at the very beginning and said, we've got three hypotheses, but actually our main focus is that she's gone in the water, where they should have left that completely open. And I do believe they should have come out, they should have spoken to the family and said, listen, it's really important that we notify the public. This is a massive story now that she is a high-risk uh, missing person because if she hasn't gone into the water, she may well have taken herself off away somewhere else. And, of course, that's a really important thing when you're dealing with missing persons to make the public aware so they can keep an eye on her. Let's be clear. The fact that we now know this information doesn't change everything because it still comes down to this point of if she had gone in the water, are they suggesting that she jumped into the water to commit suicide? Now, if she did that, the chances of dying jumping into the water are very, very slim. So is it more likely she could have gone away from the area to, you know, to do whatever herself? The position is, clearly her state of mind was in a difficult position at this time. And what we now need to do, and I wish the police had come out openly at the very beginning, help the family. It's not for the family to decide whether or not this information is released. It's down to the police. And I think they got their media strategy completely wrong. Um, very honest, actually, Mark, to be fair. And, I, and I, I don't mean this, I don't want this to be about criticising the police, but Simon has said it and you've said it, media strategy. And it doesn't say a lot to the general public, public, and this is what I'm doing the show for tonight. They must be thinking, well, no disrespect to you or Peter, there's a police force and now it takes an ex-police officer to come up and tell them where they've got it wrong. That doesn't fill us full of confidence about the Lancashire police force, does it? It's a real shame. You know, I spoke with the police in Dealty yesterday and they did acknowledge and said that we've got some of these things wrong. You, the points you've made and the points you've been making over the last few days are absolutely valid and, and we're going to try and address those things. The problem is, is you know, we're into the third week now, which is absolutely ridiculous. We shouldn't have been here. Yeah. And the public are so crucial in this. If she hasn't gone into the water, then where is she? And the public are the eyes and the ears of the police. The, public, the police are at an all-time low as far as confidence and it hasn't helped the way that this has played out in the media and the way the police have got the strategy wrong. Uh, can I bring Peter in? Peter, um, thank you for joining us again. I have so much I want to say to you. The first thing is this. You told me last week you searched that river high and low. You, on my show, ruled out that Nicola was in that river, the River Y. Why is it that tonight we still hear, allegedly, that Lancashire police still believe that's their main... Main, main, main thought, if you want. I don't understand that, and neither does the public, Peter. Well, uh, Jeremy, if I'd known this information on day one, I, I handle complex... I've worked on complex murders and cases, missing people since 1999. If I'd been given that information, and I am trusted, that wouldn't have been handed to the media, it would have been confidential, and I would have changed my whole search strategy. I assumed, Jeremy, that... Nicola had slipped into the river and it's only two foot deep in, at the bottom of the bank. And that's why I've been so adamant that she's not in that part of the river. We've thoroughly searched it. If she had jumped in or intended to take her own life or walked off or wherever she is, that would change my whole plan. She could, could have ended up in the sea. But everything, it, it's changed this and it's really annoyed me. In terms of, um, I mean, I read this, tell me if it's wrong, you've, you've faced a barrage of criticism and, and, and out of total respect, I think, for the family, you've given your services for free and you keep coming back. I now read or hear that you're going to be part of a land search and don't take this the wrong way, I thought your expertise was diving. And again, I would say to you, as I said to Mark, what does it say about this police investigation that there need to be contractors from yeah. outside giving their services for free and coming and helping out? 
No, actually, Jeremy, my expertise in my t expertise is more. I've specialised in land search. I've worked on April Jones. I've worked on the Peter Tobin case. I've very, okay. I, you know, I find buried human remains. So that's where I work. So yeah, um, yeah, it's it's awful. This is an awful case, and I just wish it had been handled a lot better in the first place by giving certain information that would have helped us um, target our search in specific areas. Are you angry with the police? I'm not. I understand. I work with the police every day. It's it's not angry with the police. I'm I'm am angry at their comms and and the trust. I mean, normally I'm trusted with highly confidential information. It never goes anywhere. And if I'd been told on the day that she uh, Nicola was high risk, she was vulnerable, then I would have treated my whole search totally, totally different. And we would have looked at potential other areas with all the expertise we've got. We have our own helicopter up there as well. And, you know, so I, I understand that they have to withhold certain information. I understand that. But giving it to me would have assisted the operation a lot, lot easier. Simon, pretty damning. Both, both Mark uh, and Peter saying that the comms, certainly, the, the media approach has hindered this case. And you touched upon in our first part about what this family are going through. And one can only imagine now for Paul and his two daughters hearing this, they must be at their wits' end. Yeah, and I think a point that um, Peter makes there, I think there's, there's another side to that, is that Peter, for all the good intentions he has, is not entitled to that information unless he's been brought in by the police. So you wouldn't give Peter certain information um, about that. So, so I, I, I don't think that, you know, unless, unless he was brought in as an as a additional... But, but here's my question. Why would they allow him to be brought in if they weren't prepared to give him information to help in, in, in the search? What's the well, point? Well, I, that... I guess you can't stop him if you don't have the area sealed off. That's one of the, that's one of the issues. Well, let's ask him. Peter, were you... Did you do this off your own back? Or, or as Simon says, were you... Because you've said, I, I, I'm annoyed that I didn't have that information. And Simon is implying that you wouldn't have that because the police didn't, what, ask you or what? No. I don't know. Yeah. Help me out. I was actually being tasked by the police search advisor, on the, by Lancashire Police, on this job. I was tasked with specific areas. So I was tasked, actually, Simon, Sorry. and no disrespect to you, but actually the police were tasking me, uh, the, Nash, the, the search advisor, the pollster on the scene, as, as I always get tasked. We offered our services, but I was specific, specifically briefed by the police search advisor on this particular job. And, and in all fairness, that would explain his anger today, that he wasn't given the full story. Mark, if I can bring you back in, and this is a, just me, this is just my reaction personally to what I heard today. I watched that press conference. I, I, I got the feeling that it was a bit panicky. I got the feeling that it was a little bit orchestrated and as a result of, of the media and public pressure. Um, going forward a little bit, you're there. Is, is their strategy changing? What... what what are we, the public, let, let alone the family, supposed to make of what happens next? I mean, for example, if Peter's right, could this poor woman be further downstream? Because I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you make some very valid points there, Jeremy. I'm certainly speaking to the police yesterday, and my conversations with them today was to really put some pressure on the SIO and say, you know, the vulnerability, the information that I've been given. You know, when I come in and do an investigation, I really go back to the very beginning, and it's amazing the amount of people that have provided me with information over the last 48 hours, telling me exactly what her state of mind is and what was going on. Police hadn't released that. I put them under pressure today and yesterday and said, listen, you've got to be much more open. What is going on? And this afternoon, I, I got some further information and pressed them on the fact that, you know, what has been the attendance of this ha at this house in relation to the emergency services? And, of course, we had this rush press release out this evening. It, uh, they are changing their strategy. The senior officers within uh, Lancashire have acknowledged that there is some failings here. You know, it's not now isn't the right time to be you know, reviewing that, but there will be in due course. What we now need to focus on is the reality of where Nicola could be. And there's two simple points. I mean, one of the questions I put to uh, the police today is, you know, are they believing that she went in the water to commit suicide? You know, or is there another means to this? The problem is down here is the water flow is incredible slow. You know, the water on that, that day was only very slightly higher than it is now. And in order to drown in that water, you would have to have gone in there, you know, either unconscious in some way or gone in there to prevent yourself from starting to 
to breathe. There is another, of course, option is that she took herself away from that. She mm. simply put the phone there, left the dog and went away. Uh, we don't know the answer to that. And let's be very clear for both, you know, uh, Paul and the family. And, and I, you know, I have been in contact with them very closely in, in regards to you know, my coming up here and also talking to the police. They are still living with the anguish of not knowing what's mm. happened to Nicholas. So whilst we're all saying, OK, it paints a very different picture, the reality is, is we still don't know where she is. And I'd still urge everybody out there to still keep providing information, still keep looking, because she hasn't just vanished. She is somewhere. Mm. And there is a strong possibility she is not in that water. She could be somewhere else. Um, Mark, thank you for now. More from you later. Just to finish with you, Peter Folding, um, what's your next course of action? You've admitted your annoyance at not having all the facts. With what's come out today, what's next for you and your team, my friend? Well, Jeremy, I've offered my services. I'd quite happily work along. I'm a trusted expert with the National Crime Agency. I'd quite happily come up and assist Lancashire Police, build that relationship. We, we had a good relationship on the day. I want to say that. I've got the greatest respect for the police. I work with them constantly. I will come up and assist. We've got ground penetration radar. I've got 20-plus years of experience of specialist search, and that's why I do this, and I'm quite happily to bring my resources up to assist if they wish, and, and the offer is open, and build that relationship and work with them to, to try and help them.